go ahead and get started here. I'm starting to, a little bit early than, than normal. Ben, uh, ben rugged me and ended up fast. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll, I'll also be talking a little bit about for Vortex too for, for some of you guys that missed uh, earlier. But um, hey guys, my name is Tony. Um, I, I work at Voltage currently and I kind of wanted to talk about um, alternative on-chain privacy solutions. So alternative in the, you know, we kind of mostly know coin joins as some ways to achieve privacy on um, on chain. So I kind of wanted to explore a little bit of alternative solutions that you could employ. Um, now you may need to do your own research of should you do these things, but uh, I kind of wanted to explore some alternative solutions. So, um, you know, I, I think most of us in this room probably know what a coin join is, right? Like who who I, who wants to, who wants kind of like more information on coin joins itself? Uh, I think we're. I think we're pretty well versed in them, so I may just like go really fast on that aspect. Um, you know, like you know, Bitcoin is very transparent as it is. Source, destination, amount, time—that's all kind of visible on chain. Um, and you know, it's pseudonymous, not anonymous. So there's random-looking addresses. Um, you know, we can kind of see in this image a little bit, but um, you know, for the most part. Um, you know, especially if you're reusing addresses, that can be a problem. It can start to leak your real identity if you're coming out of an exchange, things like that. Um, your real identity is exposed. So at a very high level coin joins, I'm, I'm going to talk about a few of them, but not dive too much into the detail. Um, not trying to start a flame war between coin join implementations. Um, but it's essentially a collaborative transaction. Um, ben kind of explained a lot of this as well in his talk just now that you all were here for. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, many inputs, many outputs. Um, it can be as low as two as, as a pay join. Uh, it could be as high as hundreds. I know Wasabi has, has, has pushed the limits on, on um, you know, collaborative transactions. Um, so typically there's a coordinated, uh, centralized coordinator involved and they do take a fee for that. Um, there's like a re UTXO registration phase, so you register your UT UTXO, um, and then you know there's a transaction phase where everyone's signing transactions, adding outputs to that, um, and you know the kind of the beautiful property is like you know you can't tell which output was registered based on which input was registered, um, you know in in, in most cases. Um, so how do coin joins itself get privacy? Um, if you're, you know, it all com kind of comes down to anonymity set. So you want to be able to hide amongst the crowd, and that's kind of, you know, the the biggest part of trying to get the most out of privacy. So if you're just doing a, a pay join and it's just me and another person, you know, there's a 50 50 percent chance that a certain output uh, belong to one of the parties. Um, but you know you want that to be even lower than 50%, right? So as you do more rounds of a coin join, and as you add more participants in a coin join, um, you really start to get uh, you know uh, more of an anonymity set. So any output that gets spent, um, it's like a you know a smaller and smaller chance that it was actually you um, that made that. Um, you know, some nuances to keep in mind. I I, I definitely don't want to um, <laughs> you know dive into all of the many. Uh, nuances of it, but like you know, generally um, over time, your anonymity st uh, starts to lower as users are making, you know, kind of like you know, normal payments or unique payments. You know, some users that weren't around with you might go into an exchange, so then they just like completely, um, you know, dox which output was theirs, um, and then you know, so that's one less person that you can hide amongst the crowd with because they know that you know that UTXO did not belong to you; it belonged to this specific user. Um, there's also timing analysis concerns to be aware of with, when spending multiple UTXOs, um, especially from like different rounds. If 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 you had, you know, let's say you spent like a year doing, you know, like 20, um, you know, coin joins, and you have 20 UTXOs, and then like all at once you just like, you know, spent them all, you know, unrelated to each other, but you just spent them all. There's some timing analysis that you can kind of guess, like, hey, wow, this, um, these like. Um, these UTXOs that were asleep, you know, basically just all woke up at once. Um, so there's some timing analysis to be concerned with coin joins. Um, you know, combining UTXOs after you have done a coin join and also weakens your anonymity set as well. So there's there's many nuances, uh, but there's also a lot of experts in this room on that. I'm not trying to be a, a coin join expert myself, uh, but you know, definitely consult the experts and you know, kind of do your own research there. Just 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 generally, there's. I, I kind of wanted to convey that you know uh, coin joining isn't a perfect solution in and of itself as well. There's there's a lot of things to be aware of as you're 
um, you, uh, as you're doing this and, and hopefully software gets better f so that like a lot of it you don't even have to think about itself. Um, very briefly, some of the more popular ones, Samurai, Whirlpool, um, Wasabi, Join Market, uh, things like that. Um, Samurai kind of has this five input, five output model. <coughs> Um, Wasabi kind of optimizes for, you know, many amounts. I, you know, I added these two bullet points after talking to Max last night. Um, hardware wallet integration, that's super huge. Um, that, so you don't have to kind of go into a, like a hot wallet um, for mixing. And, and we got Max here if you, uh, you guys want more um, things on Wasabi. Uh, I want to talk to him about that. Um, I, I did want to bring up Join Market as well. There's, you know, no centralized coordinator for that one. It's a, it's a little bit more decentralized in nature. Um, I, I believe they use both IRC and Lightning Gossip for communication and, and matchmaking. Um, they got an offer taker flow um, where you post up that you're, you know, basically uh, wanting to participate in a coin join and someone takes that. Um, you know, there's there's less liquidity generally, but at least there's like no reliance on a, a single coordinator for that. Um, and then I have to give a little highlight to, to Vortex, the new little coin join project on the block. Um, yeah, it, he just gave his talk, uh, so def I, I'll kind of, you know, yeah, good job, Ben. <laughs> um, but but in general, like the the few things I wanted to say on that is, you know, I like that it has Taproot support. Um, I like that. Well, he, he kind of said it uses the on-chain wallet from Node implementations, which kind of has a, you know, a connotation to that. You know, some issues he has to resolve around that, but the lightning support is really cool. Just kind of like as an aside, he, he, he shared his tweet of like the first, um, you know, uh, coin join uh, <laughs> channel that he did um, on lightning. And, and within an hour, I figured out which one <laughs> was his node, uh, which, which output was his um, that went to his node. Um, and that was because he was not using short channel ID aliases when he was opening private channels. So I spun up my handy dandy like lightning probing project and within, um, I really just had to like fix it first, and I spent some time uh, fixing it because I haven't used it in a while. And then, you know, within an hour, I I was able to probe which UTXO <laughs> is was belong to his his node that's not that's called not Ben Carmen. <laughs> so <laughs> that was uh like. <laughs> Yeah, he he did fix it so that uh, he's using short channel ID aliases. Um, it's kind of it's a very nuanced discussion. Um, I can talk more about Lightning. Uh, you know, if you guys want to talk uh, later after this, but um, you know, Lightning has privacy problems <laughs> that we need to solve as well. Um, so okay, the fun part, alternatives. Um, so you know, we all know those you know popular coin join solutions. Here's some cool ones that you, you may not be aware of um, as alternatives to it. Coin swaps are a really cool aspect. We'll dive into that in a little bit. Um, also like atomic swaps, um, something I'm sort of calling manual lightning coin swaps. So be, uh, I'll, I'll get into that a little bit, but you know, I'm kind of, there's a manual way to kind of achieve um, coin swaps on, on lightning today that not too many people probably use or know about. Um, I would normally not ever talk about custodial mixers, <laughs> um, but I wanted to bring up uh, Fediment, so I'm going to do a little thing on custodial mixers and then get into federated mixers. Um, uh, so that, that, that will be a fun one. Um, so coin swap. Uh, it's, it's almost exactly how it sounds. You have one UTXO and you want to swap with another UTXO, basically. So, you know, if we were thinking about how would we do this um, today without any, you know, cryptography or anything advanced, it would be as simple as like, you know, hey, Ben, um, I have, I have uh, you know, one Bitcoin UTXO here. Um, can, can you, do you want to trade with my, with, uh, do you have a one UTXO, or sorry, a one Bitcoin UTXO to trade with me? And then I send to one of his addresses, and he sends to one of my addresses, and then we both just swap to UTXO. The problem with that is that someone has to go first, um, and, and, and if I send my one Bitcoin UTXO to him, he could just run off with it, and I would have to go find him um, and beat, it, beat him up. Uh, but, um, so how do we do this? Cryptographically, how do we do this with like a t some atomicity to it? Um, and you know, they're w using some cryptography that's above me. I'm just speaking generally as a concept. Um, you kind of go into a two of two multi-sig, and this picture really explains it really well. Where we have Alice's UTXO, it looks like it's just going into a normal two of two multi-sig, um, and then you know. Um, 
after if, um, I believe there's like you know another transaction that has to occur afterwards, and then you know Bob now owns this UTXO. Uh, same thing on on Bob's side. Alice will then own his UTXO, and they should be like the same amounts. Um, what's kind of cool about this is that it's essentially just like hey, you know, um, I have a one dollar bill, and you know a lot of people forget that like one dollar or all bills um, are. are I d at least in the United States, they all have a serial number on them. So, like in theory, we could be tracking who, which, which dollar bill has you know is owned by which person by tracking serial numbers. But in practice, that that never played out really so much. Um, so it's like, hey, I have a one dollar bill. You give me a one dollar bill. Cool. No one knew of that. We just like swapped, um, and that's pretty cool. Um, I actually com I always forget about this, but Mercury was was pretty much like the first implementation of coin swaps. Um, I always forget that they have that support. Um, it kind of, it, so it's a sta state chain by nature, so you know, you can consider it a second layer solution. Um, and, you know, I don't know everything about state chains. Again, I'm kind of coming at it from like a general perspective, like here's the solutions that I know of where you can try to get privacy. Um, but, you know, you basically deposit funds into a state chain and there's a state chain coordinator involved. There's a, uh, there's a little bit of trust, or maybe you could say a lot of bit of trust, where you do have to, um, you know, trust the state chain coordinator to not collaborate with one of the parties. Um, which so it kind of breaks down if the, you know, if the coordinator is one of the parties itself, and then they could definitely try to steal funds. But I believe with this, um, there are proofs involved that, like, if, if the coordinator did try to ever steal funds from someone or collaborate with someone to help them steal funds, then you have proof of this, and then you would just burn their entire reputation, and no one would ever use them ever again. So it's kind of just like a one-shot, um, you know, ruin your, your reputation. But they do have swap support, which is cool. So. I think I have a uh, general image here. Here's kind of like the UI of it. I haven't used Mercury Wallet myself, so I've just taken this off of some websites. But essentially, you would deposit Bitcoin in. Um, it's, it's still like fully backed, right? So if you deposit one Bitcoin in, you should have one Bitcoin in your Mercury Wallet um, minus any fees. And then they, and then I found this screenshot just earlier today where um, here's like how it actually looks to do swaps and stuff. So apparently they have um, this concept as groups and you know, you have multiple participants come in for multiple denominations of Bitcoin. Um, so you can kind of see here they have five participant rounds um, and with various amounts. So I guess like once they have, you know, five participants or so, then everyone kind of just like swaps UTXOs around. Um, and the way it kind of works where it's trustless, where pseudo trustlessly besides the coordinator collaborating is this idea of deleting the private keys involved. So um, to do a transfer in state, uh, in, in, with state chains, my understanding is that it um, you know, basically gives the private key to another party, but the, the, the state chain, like you know, the state chain coordinator deletes the key. Um, and I don't, know, I don't know if that's with, um, uh, I don't know if that's accurate. Max is shaking his head no. There's, there's, there's some aspect of like deleting keys uh, with state chains that they, uh, you know, the coordinator, I don't know if they're using a, 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 an environment, a trusted environment for it or what. Um, but the transfers, internal transfers are kind of come down to like deleting keys. Um, but anyways, here's like one implementation of state chains. Um, there's also teleport. Um, you know, Chris Belcher has been working on this for a little bit. Um, you know, it's, it's still under development, so I don't have too much more to say, but there is like a proof of concept available, um, and it, it doesn't need a state chain at all. Um, it's, it, it, you know, I was looking at some of the um, designs and stuff that they have, and it's very similar to just this simple concept of like Alice has a UTXO, they go into a multi-sig, and then now that's Bob's UTXO. Um, you know, one of the things I hear about coin swaps is, uh, as far as trade-offs goes is that, you know, people say they, they would rather just do coin joins because and with with coin join, everyone's coins mostly look the same, right? Like if, if you're talking about five inputs, five outputs, whatever coin you get, Sorry, in the end, it, it, it just came from a coin join, and so everything kind of looks pretty uniform. Um, but with a coin swap, the trade-off is that you know you don't you don't really know the history of the UTXO that you're going to get. Um, so a lot of people 
will say that like, okay, well, what if I want to go back into exchange at some point and the history that I get, you know, someone was doing some really shady stuff with that UTXO and now it looks like I did, right? Because, you know, you can almost consider a coin join to be kind of like cleaning the slate and everyone just like has this uniform. We just came from a coin join slate, so you can't really attribute um, a previous history to that to that coin, but with 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 coin swap, you definitely do. If, if, if it's done properly enough, it shouldn't even look like it came from a coin swap. It should just look like it had a few transfers involved. Um, so that is the trade-off, is that you are getting the history of someone else's UTXO, and you might not know all of that history. Um, atomic swaps, so another approach to on-chain privacy. Um, and you know, there's there's something called atomic swaps, and then there's like you know submarine swaps. Um, atomic swaps, uh, it's generic enough, so it could be over different coins or layers or anything. It's just kind of a general term. It's the idea, you know. I guess coin swap is is a version of atomic swaps. You want to think about it that way, where um, you know someone has a coin, it could be on a different chain, and they trade with another person atomically. And if 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 something were to mess up. Um, both parties would get their original, um, you know, funds back minus any on-chain fees. Um, so lightning submarine swaps are kind of a version of atomic swaps, um, but specific to going from on-chain to lightning second layer. Um, and, you know, here's kind of a, an example on Thunderhub of, of um, what that kind of looks like. There's, you know, a lot of uh, granular detail there, but essentially, um, you know, if you're trying to get some on-chain funds um, and get some on-chain privacy here, essentially the, the flow is uh, you pay someone's Lightning invoice, someone providing this swapping service to you. So you pay their invoice. Um, they can't actually redeem that invoice yet because it should be using, um, you know, a, a pre-image that they're only going to get by... Um, you know, once the on-chain funds are deposited, there's there's a lot of revealing of the original key, and then once they, you know, uh, once uh, one of the parties withdraws that Bitcoin from that contract, they reveal the pre-image that is used to withdraw the Lightning invoice. I don't think I have any slides on how that looks, um, but essentially, how it looks to a user is you pay an invoice and you get some on-chain funds. Um, it's it's pretty it's it's that simple really. Uh, just there's two on-chain transactions involved, and your software should handle all of the complexities. Um, and if something were to fail, um, you will get the funds back, minus any fees that you put in. So it's it's pretty cool in the fact that like if someone's providing the service, um, you get their UTXOs, and if you know Lightning, if you're using Lightning in a privacy-oriented way, which there's some caveats there. Um, you should be able to, to hide enough of the source of the Lightning funds so that you can't um, attribute source with the actual on-chain funds uh, that you get in the end. Um, so in practice, um, there's a, a few liquidity providers that provide submarine swapping services. I know Lightning Loop, they have their in and out based on, you can also come into Lightning that way as well by sending someone an on-chain fund. But for the purpose of if you're trying to get better on-chain privacy yourself, then what you want is to get someone else's UTXO and not your own. So in this case, you know, Lightning Loop out would be what you wanted to use. Um, also, little known fact, Moon is basically uh, a submarine swap wallet. Um, it's not really Lightning, and <laughs> to be honest, it's not really atomic swaps either. Uh, so, uh, but they, they use the same mechanism, it's just that they, it's, it's zero comp, so it's not atomic. Um, there's many instances where you can steal money from Moon, but that's that's beside the point. They, but they are a Lightning submarine swap provider, um, uh, and there's other independent people that anyone can start their own, you know, uh, liquidity uh, submarine swap liquidity service. Um, so I kind of also on that topic, um, without going through atomic swaps, uh, there is a way to almost achieve that on Lightning today, anyways. Um, it's it's essentially an atomic swap with extra steps. Um, it's uh, there's there's no ad additional tech complexity involved besides you know just normal lightning, um, but you know you do have to do this yourself and kind of know a little bit of what you're doing. And I'll kind of explain some of the steps side by side. Um, and what's cool about this is that uh, any node that is offering you know or 
any node that is willing to open a channel with you, whether if it's your friend or a liquidity provider, there's a lot more liquidity providers just for opening channels on Lightning than, than you know, atomic swaps services themselves. So it kind of opens up more peers that you can do this with um, and you can get more UTXOs uh, from, from that are available to you to get. So how does this work? Um, you know, the step one is you set up a new node and you have someone open a channel to you. You could, you could use something like Magma to pay them to open a channel with you, or you can have your friend do this as well. Um, but they'll open up a channel with you, so it's essentially using their UTXO and not yours. So you can spin up a whole new Lightning node. I actually kind of advise people to do this anyways um, when you're setting up a new Lightning node, even if you want to keep it. Um, is to you know, not open channels with your own UTXOs. Even though there's, there's a 50-50% chance to the outside world that it's one of your UTXOs, um, it's always better to just not contribute your UTXOs at all if you're trying to get better privacy on, the, on your Lightning node. Um, but in this purpose, is at the very end, I'll, you know, we'll, I'll instruct you to just delete your node in general because you really don't need to keep it around. Um, I if you're just trying to get someone else's UTXO through this like Lightning coin swap. So you set up a new node, they open up a, UTX, uh, a channel with you with their UTXO. Um, you set up another node. Um, and you, th and with this node, you'll actually open up uh, the channel with your UTXO. And you would want to open up the channel with some random node on the network um, that should have you know, decent liquidity or decent channels so that you can actually route payments. Because what you'll want to do is route a payment from the, the random node to the liquidity node. And if there's not any liquidity between those two nodes, it's not going to work out for you. But um, So you open up a new channel with the UTXO you essentially want to get rid of. Um, and you can, you can do either key send the payment to your, your node or you can create a bunch of invoices on your new node. Um, the cool thing about this um, and doing it manually instead of atomic swaps, um, atomic swaps can fail sometimes, uh, typically because there's liquidity issues routing the payment to your, to your um, atomic swap provider. And so you gotta have to like play with amounts back and forth and like say, okay, can I, can I do a submarine swap for a million sats? And it's like, no, I couldn't get liquidity to them. And it's just this like, you know, very painful process of trying to, you know, have like a one shot atomic swap. Um, with this way, you can just sort of like stream key send payments to your node until you eventually maxed out how much you could send. And maybe it's for the whole amount or maybe it's for a partial amount, but you can really just try to get the maximum amount to your node that you can um, without any like intermittent failures that just like cause the whole thing to fail. So, yeah. Key send's just easier. Like you, c you don't need to do this back and forth. You can just use invoices too. Um, but with the invoice flow, you would have to go to your new node over here, create the invoice, go to your other node, pay it. And then, you know, if there's an amount failure, then you have to go create another invoice with a specific amount and go back to your, diff your, your other node and pay it and back and forth and back and forth um, until you, you maximize how much you could send. Um, with key send, you can even just do like shots of like, you know, a thousand sats each or, or you know, you can do the, um, you can do like a 50-50 approach, like half the channel, and then and then go down and down if you get any failures. But Keysend just like cuts out the step of creating the invoice, and then having to go to your other node and pay it, and then if it had a failure, changing the amount and doing it over over and over again. Um, and then so once you've been able to send as much as you can to your new node, um, you can close out both of those channels, and essentially what you're left with is that. Um, you know your your original your your different node over here on the left. Um, you essentially just transfer the UTXO to someone else's random node or or whatever amount that you know. If there's a little bit of change left, you'll get some change back. Um, but with your new node, you essentially now have a UTXO that belonged to the liquidity node, um, and you've essentially in this case essentially done a swap. And uh, what's cool is that you didn't even do a swap with. Um, the same parties. You just like gave a UTXO to someone random, and then you got a UTXO in the end um, for you know probably around a similar amount um, minus lightning fees. 
And then after that, trans you can throw away both the nodes, send the UTXO, uh, UTXO to your, your wallet or cold storage or whatever before you throw it away. Um, but essentially, yeah, like I said, you're left with a new UTXO in, in an on-chain wallet and you, know, you just gave your other UTXO, you swapped it and gave it to someone's random node. So, you know, in practice, it's, uh, you know, I, I do it, I, I did it once. <laughs> it's kind of a lot of effort to kind of go through, but um, it's, it's a cool way that you can get a coin swap that way. Um, I'll talk about custodial mixers briefly because, like, you shouldn't really use them. Um, they're typically risky and illegal. You're, you're basically having some custodian um, handle the funds and just send you funds that belong to someone else, and it's, you know, th it's typically illegal. It's typically, you can get, uh, they can take off of your funds and steal them. They can uh, get seized by law enforcement. Um, you know, it's also not the best for privacy itself. You get privacy from the outside world, but you won't have any privacy from within uh, that. So, like, let's say that this custodial mixer was a spook um, providing the service, and so they can link the inputs to the outputs really easily. Um, and then, uh, or you know, that information, if they store it, then it could get seized later. And then now you just, you know, um, just just did that. So um, one interesting thing is you can almost consider an exchange to be a custodial mixer if you want to think about it that way. You get privacy from, again, the outside world, but very little privacy from the exchange. And even worse, uh, you you know, you don't get any privacy from uh, you know uh, the regulators. You know. Um, that want the exchanges to collect this information in the first place. So don't use custodial mixers. But I bring that up and how they work because I like the aspect of federated mixers uh, using Fediment. Um, so you could essentially create a federated mixer with Fediment, and it has some properties of a custodial mixer. You're still relying on some trust um, that the federation isn't going to steal your funds. But you get better security and better privacy, and, and I'll explain why. Um, uh, it does use federated custody, so that means there's a threshold of people that need to actually um, collaborate to steal your funds. Um, and you know, in in worst case scenarios, it's like it's it's the same actor in the end, <laughs> um, and they have just four keys, and that that wouldn't be good. But if you know that it's like different actors, um, you know, like me, Ben Carmen, Paul, we could all be a uh, Fediment uh, custodian, and you're trusting all of us or a majority of us to be honest. Um, but there is this kind of cool aspect of like federated mixers, like they either have to go into this with like. Um, the, the, the intent to take off with funds in the end, or they have to play this game where the, like one person goes, oh man, it'd be nice to like take off with these funds, and as soon as they go, if I go to Ben and say, Ben, do you want to take off someone's funds, and Ben goes, what the fuck? <laughs> like, you just, uh, no, dude, fuck you. I'm gonna dox that you just said that to me, and then there's this like, you know, chicken and egg problem with, with it. So, I mean, in general, you know, you know I wouldn't want to use, uh, you know, custodial services to hold my funds, but if you, um, you know, are using it to seek privacy on like a little bit of your funds at a time, uh, I think that's a cool aspect to use a, a federated model for. Um, and what's also better in regards to using, uh, you know, Fediment instead of a custodial mixer is like I said, with custodial mixers, you send your funds to one guy, he has this internal balance of how much you're owed, and then later when you get to withdrawal, he'll check, oh yeah, this user had this much balance and he's trying to withdraw, so I'll let him withdraw to this location. Um, that custodial mixer knows the inputs and the outputs. Um, if, it, if, like I said, if he's a spook or that information leaks, then you, you essentially, you don't get any privacy benefits from, but you took on all the risks to do that. Um, with Fediment, it uses uh, you know blinded signatures to do this, and, and Ben talked a little bit about you know bl how bl uh, blinded signatures are used in a, in a coin join capacity. But essentially, um, you can't link link the withdrawals to the original deposits, um, with some caveats around timing and amount analysis. There's always going to be metadata that can you know kind of leak you a little bit, but um, in general. Um, you don't when you when you do a withdrawal from a feder uh, a fediment, um, uh, they don't know which inputs belong to it, so it just looks like a normal withdrawal. 
Um, they don't know how much balance you, you, you currently have. Um, they just know that, you know, they have like X amount of, you know, Fediment tokens outstanding or so, um, but they don't know who owns what or what amount or anything like that. Um, the other cool thing is that there are integration possibilities with, with Fediment 2, so you can come into the federated, uh, the, fed the Fediment through Lightning, um, which is nice. You can also withdraw out through Lightning to try to minimize your on-chain footprint in general, which is, and then they also have, I think they did a proof of concept at the last BTC++ in Austin, of, uh, I think Simpiment or FediSimp, I forget what they called it, but it, it, was, uh, it was using a simpli uh, simplicity contracts to go into and out of a Fediment, um, so you don't have to like deposit on-chain or deposit on Lightning. It was really just showing that it has a nice modular system to it uh, for integrations. Um, and then again, at a, at a high level, um, you know how Fediment works. Um, you know this is kind of unnecessary. But what I thought was interesting is I just found this uh, image. It came from Coinbase. Coinbase did some research into Fediment uh, a few months ago, which uh, they actually did a good job. Like it was a, like an 11-minute article on it, and it was pretty good. So I got the source there, or you can just Google Coinbase Fediment. But it's essentially user deposit Bitcoin. They get this IOU that has some privacy aspects to it, and later when they go to use that IOU, they have no idea who you were um, in the first place, and they allow you to withdraw like normal. But um, that's essentially the Fediment aspect of how, you know, I'm sure anyone that works at Fediment would hate me saying right now you could use it as a custodial mixer, but uh, you can. It's great. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's essentially the conclusion of that. Um, there are, you know, coin join implementations that we all know and love, but it's, it's not the only way to try to get on-chain privacy. Um, you know, light, any time I was talking about Lightning, that's a whole discussion in and of itself. There's a lot of problems with Lightning Privacy. You can go to lightningprivacy.com to learn about some of those. We just dropped that paper. Um, and then with all of this, tons of nuances. I was just speaking more broadly about alternative solutions. I didn't get into depth on all the nuances or, you know, whether it's uh, a good choice to use one or the other. You're going to have to do your own research there. Uh, I just want to kind of open minds a little bit uh, and discussion points of things that you could do um, that aren't coin joins. But that's, uh, that's essentially my talk. If there's uh, any questions in general uh, about any of the concepts, I'd be happy to, to answer them. But yeah, Max. Uh, do you know if there's a comparison of block space usage or features? Block space comparison. Um, no, I, I, I haven't really done any block space comparison. So like, I guess like the scalability of it. I would probably think like, you know, Fediment would probably be the most scalable out of all of that just because I mean, you can even come in through Lightning and exit through Lightning um, without any like on-chain footprint at all. Um, but besides that, I know when it comes to atomic swaps, there's like two on-chain transactions involved with each atomic swap. So again, a terrible decision for Moon to be using that since you know every transaction in and out. Like if you're using it as your daily spending wallet doing atomic swaps, that really sucks. Um, you're you're spending two on-chain transactions every time. Um, but if you're doing just one shots where you're just like, hey, I have like one Bitcoin, I want an atomic swap. Um, you know, two on-chain transactions, you know, aren't aren't the end of the world. But um, besides that, as um, I guess that was most, um, and then Mercury Wallet, you know, they kind of have this internal system um, where once you come in, it's just like state chain transactions. Um, so that would, you know, kind of give, um, you know, some good on-chain or, or, or less on-chain footprint with that. Yeah, I mean, use coin join solutions, use something like coin swap. I mean, I wouldn't go as far as saying it's a surveillance coin because that makes it sound like that was the original intent to be a surveillance coin. Um, I don't think that was the original intent. I think transparency was the intent, um, especially with using something that um, was a far out idea in the first place back in 2009. 
Um, so I, w I would I would say transparency was probably the intent, not surveillance. But um, if you kind of get into situations where you can coin swap or use coin join, um, you, it's not perfect, but and, you know you can kind of try to get rid of some of that surveillance. Also, you don't need to go through KYC to get your coins in the first place, so you can kind of minimize on the amount of surveillance that that is leaked um, from from that. So that would just be a general. Bitcoin as a surveillance, you know, conversation. Any other? Yes. Yeah, probably because I don't know too much about sign and chains myself. I, I like state chain is probably as most as I know of, of like something that's some side. I, there's also space chains and and all those other things. Uh, I'm not too knowledgeable in them, but if you have a uh, I mean, using a side chain for for you know uh, obfuscating funds. Like, is is that? It, do you know enough ab about it? Like, is it a good solution or a possible solution? Right. Yeah. So using side chains almost as an atomic swap uh, service as well. Yeah. That's an option. Yeah, I guess that's a good point that Max brought up is that there, is, with it being a public side chain, there is this like on-chain visibility. So if you can go into that side chain and get the privacy you need from within it and then come out, um, since I, you know, I'm sure there's many ways to do a side chain, but in this scenario, um, that side chain would be public. So if there's, an, if there's enough liquidity in, in uh, some side chains to be sufficiently um, provable. Um, otherwise, like like Max said, with, with Fediment, you don't. There's not an internal. You know, it's not a public internal. Uh, sorry, it's not a public transfer of who has what coins or whatever. So you kind of get um, once you're in, you get that. You almost get that privacy without having to do internal transfers and stuff. Um, meanwhile, with side chains, you you gotta at least within that side chain get a sufficient enough privacy. Same with state chains with Mercury. You should probably do enough swaps from within um, a Mercury wallet to get a sufficient privacy. Uh, maybe you don't need to. Uh, uh, that would probably be a question for them. I'm not too knowledgeable on that, but glad you brought up side chains. Yeah, how much liquidity ETH has. I'm not too knowledgeable. I haven't used uh, Mercury, and, and judging by mempool.space and how much liquidity uh, is in Liquid, I'm, I'm not confident enough in that, um, that there's enough liquidity. Um, there would probably need to be like an in-depth analysis, not only just uh, liquidity comparisons, but liquidity comparisons in terms of if I use this, can I get enough privacy from it um, in, in the first place? Um, uh, but that they, I, I, I can't count on that specifically, but some some further research on that would probably be really helpful. Uh, new version of Mercury? I'm not sure. I'm uh, not sure if a new version has been released or not. Uh, I, I've heard that they've been wanting uh, that they've been updating some things recently, um, but not too knowledgeable on the details on that. Cool. Well. Yeah, thank you guys for coming. Yeah.